Hello, and welcome to RRI Explained, a RESBIOS podcast. It is the aim of the RESBIOS project to embed Responsible Research and Innovation, or RRI, into four universities across Europe in the hope of improving the interconnectivity between science research and society, with a particular focus on the biosciences. But what is RRI exactly? Well, hopefully we can find out together. This time, we are joined by Dr. Magdalena Zadkowska from the University of Gdansk, one of the partners of the RESBIOS project, who will talk to us today about the importance of gender equality in RRI and how the RESBIOS project is hoping to promote gender equality within the field of bioscience research. Thank you for joining us today, Magdalena. So today we're going to be talking about RESBIOS and the role of gender equality in RRI, which is Responsible Research and Innovation. Could you just describe quickly what gender equality means within RRI and why we need to be pursuing this in particular? Uh, Yes, what I consider very important uh, while we talk about RRI and the gender is how these two dimensions or perspectives rely one on the other. So for me, this is very important to consider RRI as a kind of umbrella for some changes that uh, have been going on for years in all European universities. And there were like both related to like top down and bottom up movements that were happening at the universities. And sometimes I think they were not overlapping. So what I consider important is that we really talk about not putting some new change just for two years because there is like EU project to implement something, but we really are concentrating on macro changes. I'm sociologist, so for me, it's really clear that as the labor market, as the education indicators change, we have to, as universities, science institutions respond to that. From like other perspectives, uh, as young people change, as uh, internet re- make the revolution ev- in our lives, we also have to respond to it. So what I really like is that we can take part in something that coordinates all these changes in a way. Women in STEM, gender equality is kind of a very much well, well-deserved, a hot topic at the moment. What is the state of play for gender equality in STEM and specifically within the biosciences? Uh, Yes, I think that uh, it would be really interesting to go back five years ago or 10 years ago, because the changes are going quite quickly. And for example, young students, it might be even of uh, why you talk about it. There are so many girls studying STEM sciences. We do not see discrimination. So Maybe first thing is it's not that easy to convince people that we need some changes. As long as we do not go into macro uh, indicators, I just mentioned a little bit at the beginning. Uh, But of course, uh, we have to understand that some changes are really slow because scientific career is long lasting. But of course, then there are certain moments in the career related to um, family issues, to work-life balance issues, to gender stereotypes, that as a good manager of scientific institution, you should always take them into consideration. And then I think, and I find STEM sciences and maybe minds, set of minds and like personal minds of STEM scientists, very, I might say, useful to help and cooperate with us social scientists to really convince that we talk about facts and about something that we can count, then we can uh, monitor and evaluate the change. And we do not talk only about the dialogue, the empathy, the taking someone's perspective, because uh, once you have profits, when you can estimate risks, uh, then it's I find it easier to convince people that the change is needed and just have more people on the board. That's really interesting. So, again, you talk kind of a little bit about introducing these kind of changes, like 
from the bottom up, like introducing these concepts as like having role models for young people and uh, women and all genders, really just sort of like having equal role models, but also top down institutional changes. But also, yeah, the idea that you can talk about kind of like the empathic side, the the general just sort of like equality side. But it's really interesting that you mentioned kind of like the financial, the capitalist sort of side. It's a really interesting idea that putting kind of a dollar bill kind of like value on the benefits of introducing all these other people into the scientific working market, quote unquote. Yeah, that's an interesting kind of perspective that I've not really heard that much before. Uh, yes, I think it comes from the experience of um, talking with different people. And I can have this experience because what we did, for example, at our university was really uh, make the commission council also the panel of experts coming from different fields in science, but also from different administrative position. And when you also have people from back office side, those who come the money of the university or deal with different parametrics that, for example, a ministry constrain you to, to follow, then you can find the common field. And I see that um, both senior and young researchers' career, this is the very good point to talk about, uh, to talk with uh, authorities. Uh, because when we see and follow how are they going, both like young and senior researchers, then we see certain gaps. Then we observe that we lose some talents. Mm -hmm. And then we observed that we invested so much, not only in sense of money, but of work of like professors or uh, other um, staff working in, in our community uh, that can be lost. And this is what I have experienced. See the point of uh, coming up together and just saying, OK, what has changed? How are young people different uh, now? Maybe we should also follow the changes and open up to the young generation to make the university institution more attractive, not only uh, to invite people to study here, but to remain for like long life career. I find RRI with all the aspects being um, a really good umbrella to create like new policies uh, within the university, answer needs and expectations of uh, em employees, but also of students, of um, academic uh, teachers, of researchers that have always their individual perspective. So how important is it to, like, you talk about this umbrella of RRI, but also kind of like the Rest BIOS project is spread across Europe. Do you think it's important to have like a European branching like approach to RRI and in specifics gender equality? Just like, is, are there areas like your experience in your institute compared to in other European countries? Do you think that having kind of that interconnection is worthwhile? Uh, first of all, I have to say that I'm really and very much for networking. So I'm really a networking person. Uh, I, of course, I worked about my competences to do so, but this is the part of my identity too. So I understand that there are among scholars and researchers, there are also like individualistic people who, who like to work just closed in their office for themselves. And of course, this is one of the idea to work with the university. But what my experience teaches me is that once you open up to different discipline, to different gender, to different age, to different nationality, to different size, uh, then you see that some changes and some good uh, outcomes can come uh, faster and be attractive to more people. So that's why I'm more for like this collectivistic uh, idea of working together. That's why I find European projects uh, very opening to uh, speed up with some changes and to convince people we do something that matter, not only just for the place I live, but like for all society and like community like EU. But on the other hand, it is not that easy, and I understand people who can feel uh, disappointed or deluded because sometimes it can take the idea or the rhythm that there are always some leaders and some followers. And this is really not interesting and um, 
a good position to always be the follower. So what I try to do, being from Central Eastern Europe, that you need some power to uh, convince others that you also have good ideas. So what I try to work is really count on diversity. And the idea of diversity is that is always like that it works under two conditions. First condition is that you have to, to feel that you can be yourself. So, of course, I'm from EU, but I'm also from Poland. And for other people, it's important that this Polish person might have something interesting to say and not only follow the other country's rules. And the other, the other important condition, uh, so first is that I can do, I can be myself. And the second is that I can feel I belong. So, and okay, so the second uh, condition is that uh, you feel you belong. And here we come to international projects. And when you can call the project my project and our project, it's like on the level of identity. This is where we go. And with the, as an expert of gender and with gender changes, uh, RRI gives first international projects and then this uh, umbrella of like radical and big changes uh, can give uh, this uh, part, this group of spe specialists, uh, the feeling of belonging. And this is how the diversity can give the best of it. That's really interesting. So you talk about like feeling kind of like as part of your identity and feeling kind of comfortable and familiar kind of in science is your life, that sort of thing. Do you think that needs more needs to be done to make the working environment for researchers and scientists more equitable for both genders? So everyone's feeling more comfortable within the working environment or is it small changes to people's behaviors or do you think there needs to be some sweeping kind of like land shift? Uh, I think that what is needed is always the patience. You have to be patient uh, first. Then I think it's good that people can take different roles and really see not only my perspective, but also like the bigger picture. So with, within the ResBios project, what I really like is that uh, mentor, mentees becomes, become mentors. And even if you work on this um, mentor-mentee path or task, it's important to also to always be open to learn something, no matter which side you take. I think that uh, more people we have that believe in individual profits of RRI, it's easier to convince the others. So like um, this um, mass effect is needed. But of course, without authorities and leaders coming up to level of rectors, if you do not see that top is saying the same thing and showing that this is important for all community, all the university, that is not like one year fashion or, or one year headline, we cannot go any farther. So, of course, I believe it's not that difficult to change people's practices. Attitudes, okay, it's like long process, but practices are quicker to, to be changed if you see the individual uh, profit and if you believe that you are not the only one and you are not fighting against. So you talk a little bit about the Respios project using mentors and mentees. Could you talk a little bit about that process and how you learned from previous experiences and previous projects? Uh, yes, we the Resbias project is in a way the um, uh, one who which follows the Starbios project. And uh, my experience in this project, uh, in Starbios project, was I can call it kind of really good practice because within our university, uh, the project was uh, applied and then gained by biotechnology department. And at the very start, they looked through the task to do, they agreed upon, and then they invite the specialist from psychology and sociology, which was me in this case, and uh, my friend who is a psychologist. And from the very beginning, we were working together because sometimes even within one university, 
you do not meet other uh, co-workers from other disciplines. So uh, we talk a lot about internationality, interculturality, interdisciplinarity, but it's not that easy just to connect. And this kind of projects may do it because then you, you work on something bigger than only the very specialistic uh, field you are um, one who, who knows a lot. So uh, in a way, we were experts, in a way, we were mentors, but in other situations, we were like kind of mentees and those who do not know much about like STEM. <laughs> so we were uh, learning a lot and understanding the problems and talking to scientists and looking into their career paths, etc. So it was really rewarding in a way how much we know and how like the long life stories of for example, young women um, involved in science are simi similar no matter which discipline you think. But then you also have some differences. For example, with small children in sociology, you can work more from home. And when, when you are, once you are a biologi biologist, you have to be in lab. So it's not that we are all the same and we can solve ev everything using the same tools. So it was really good. And then with ResBios projects, we became the mentoring institution and we work with two mentees institutions but from the very beginning uh, we also supervise in a way them being mentors this is one thing one thing and on the other hand we learn a lot from how they deal with different projects they have with introducing the um, gender equality plans, for example. We see that men and women actually have similar problems within institutions and maybe we differ about some indicators showing us that one thing is like gender gap that give you really uh, big macro differences. But when we go into small things is that there are really good practices in each country, in each institution. You shouldn't make everyone starting from the same zero point while you think about institutional change. So what do you hope that the REST BIOS project will, like, what is the legacy of the REST BIOS project? Obviously, you want these RRI principles and gender equality to outlive the REST BIOS project and hopefully through this mentoring mentee kind of system it will propagate itself throughout these institutions. The uh, hope was the, the good. The hope is good, I think, to discuss. <laughs> because I was, uh, I wanted to mention that Respires project is happening in quite difficult time. When we talk about networking and uh, mentoring programs, we only work online. So this is my real hope that we can meet uh, like within the project, because I believe that, uh, of course, uh, Zoom conferences and Zoom meetings also do have some, some advantages because uh, we can participate more. But I believe that like human-human relation is really important and cannot be done only online. So this is my hope <laughs> that we will uh, meet in uh, real places. But uh, using the metaphor of COVID pandemic, I hope that ResBios will be kind of contagious about the changes. So we are so many as institutions that it's really difficult now to do not follow the changes, especially that Horizon Europe uh, is saying it's really straightforward that you have to have gender equality planned. So I'm kind of optimistic that uh, with some patient, we can expect that all the work we are doing will really finish with strong, heavy uh, indicators. You talk quite a lot about the networking and the interdisciplinarity of RRI. How important is it to kind of interweave kind of like, obviously there's education and kind of science communication there, which Obviously, if you have like good teaching and good education about gender issues and getting good role models out there to, to young girls and to all, all people really just changing the face of who a scientist is. But how in other ways do the other pillars of RRI kind of help with gender equality? I find the other pillars be really proving that we do not talk about kind of radical change that I don't know some people understand that quota for example in this way that now we do not want one gender in some places or that we will come up with some 
paradox situation that the gender is the most important thing, uh, which we know it isn't. So I find all these fillers just showing what I have said at the beginning, that the world has changed and to make universities be open, democratic places that everyone can take profit from because we pay taxes for it. As when we, we talk about public institution, it is like our common good. So it, would, it should work for everyone. It should give something to local communities. It should give something to national communities. It should give something like on European level. It should attract young and not only also like old age people from uh, different social and cultural capital settings. It should uh, convince those who think I do not belong here that yes, you really belong and we will make my effort to help you to feel so. And uh, I believe that articles should be free and uh, this is our common work um, that should be used by educators, that should be read, and um, the language of this should suit every setting it can go. And, and I think the time of COVID, I will mention it again, uh, really gives us uh, motivation that this is important, that without giving the science the pr priority, and making it understandable and useful for everyone as the world community, we cannot survive. So yeah, that's really interesting because uh, obviously the, a key part of RRI is reaching out. So science kind of reaching out to the community and them both benefiting from each other. Also right now with the time of COVID and time of climate change and food security, bioscience is such an important part of well, every person's life nowadays. So that's really interesting. Uh, I find that my experience is that also STEM scientists, which, as you said, now are on, at the very first line of what is happening all around the world, uh, know and understand that the, they cannot be left alone and need other disciplines like huma humanistic and social disciplines to organize the scientific world to work at, as it can in, in the like, best possible way. Thank you very much for joining us today and thank you for your insight into RRI and gender equality. The RESBIOS project is funded by the EU with the grant number 872146. To learn more about the RESBIOS project and the other pillars of RRI, please go to respios.eu. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.